Jim Andrews and I staked a claim up north of here and started to work. We had a nice vein of ore that paid off for months. And things were looking good for us until the ore started to pinch off. And then one day it was gone. But we knew that a little deeper in, we'd strike it again. So we worked harder than ever. This blast should open up a new vein that'll make us forget all about the other. I had a few ideas and plans of my own especially about the gold from the new vein. I'd worked hard on that mine, and this time I wanted it all for myself. I figured that if my partner was in the mine and the dynamite went off accidentally, I wouldn't have a partner anymore, and his share of the mine would be mine. Okay, Jim. Better check the connections on your end. Sure thing, Farrell. Jim went back into the tunnel to make a final inspection of the powder and electrical connections. That was just the way I'd planned it. So I had to work fast to get the detonator rigged. Then I waited until he got closer. Eagerly, I searched for the gold we both knew was there, the gold that would make me rich. But we'd guessed wrong, and all I could see was hard rock. Gold is where you find it. But the vein we were searching for wasn't there. I suddenly realized the mine was worthless. It was hard to believe, but my dreams of riches had vanished, and I had murdered my partner. All for nothing. Suddenly, I saw him move. He was still alive. Jim. Oh, you... No, it was an accident, Jim. Something happened to the wires. A, a short circuit. I'll get you some water. I have a baby daughter. Her mother's dead. My share of the gold I left for her in a trust fund in Grass Valley with an attorney named... Jason Howley. Don't worry, Jim. I'll see that she gets the money. Thanks a lot, Farrell. I have a picture of her in my... A trust fund in Grass Valley. So that's what he'd been doing with his money. Saving it for that kid of his while I was spending mine on fun and excitement at the gambling table. Well, you can't leave a dead partner for the coyotes and buzzards or for the police either. So I decided that the mine would be a proper grave for Jim Andrews. And maybe Jim's accident was going to make me rich after all. One silver dollar dated 1899. If it was going to bring me the same kind of luck it brought Jim, I didn't want it. So I gave it back to him. But the trust fund was something else. Just like he had told me, the picture of the baby was there in his wallet, along with his other personal papers. You know, it's hard to believe that was 16 years ago. She's now of age and coming out here to get her money. Here, read this. So she's on her way out here to get the $50,000 that isn't here. We're in plenty of trouble. I wish now I hadn't taken your advice on those bad mining ventures. If that girl finds out her money's gone, we'll both go to jail. You're an attorney. You should be able to figure something out. But in case you can't, I have a solution. Now listen, Farrell, you murdered that girl's father, but you'll keep your hands off her. I may have been part of a few crimes in my life, 
But murder's not one of them. Who said anything about murder? You remember that ghost train scheme I spoke to you about? Not another wild idea of yours. Wild idea or not, Rogers and the pioneers are starting to ship those blooded cattle they've been raising for the past five years. If we can get our hands on a few of them, it'll take care of the girl and us, too. I've already listened to you once too often. Maybe. But if we don't get our hands on some money, somebody's going to jail. Yeah, yeah. Roger starts shipping those cattle tomorrow. Hey, fellas, can't you hear that? Casey wants to talk to us. with you. You're right there, Roy. I'm rough, tough, and mean, and I've got some of the finest cattle shipped out of here in 20 years with me. We're glad you think so, Casey. That new-blooded stock of yours is going to make you boys rich. Jenks at the hardware store said that your new bit was ready for you. I figured that I'd pick you up along in here somewhere. We can hear that whistle of yours a long ways off. Ha <laughs> ha, you rascal. You're a sugary after, and you know where I keep it, too, don't you? <laughs> yeah. There. There's those two saddle strings you wanted. They're the best I could get. Well, thanks a lot. How much I owe you? Forget it. You owe me just one good song and about ten choruses. <laughs> Come on, now. Just once, for old time's sake. On the big rock and the mountain. <laughs> That's it. Oh, say, I've got to be gone. Well, thanks a lot, Casey, and take it easy. Don't worry. I've got a long, slow run through the hills tonight. Now, you give those cattle a good ride, they're going to pay off the mortgage on the old homestead. That'll be the first folding money we've had in five years. You can be sure that old Casey will take better care of them than their own mothers. Well, there they go. Take a look at them, ain't they, Butes? Sure are. Five years of hard work and now it's finally going to pay off. Yeah. Now maybe we can take a vacation. Not until you finish that fence. We've got some yearlings coming in here to pasture. Sometimes I think you shouldn't have left the state police. You're still a cop at heart. <laughs> if somebody wasn't a cop around here, we wouldn't be getting that nice big fat check case you'll bring back to us. Oh, the check. Oh, goodbye, baby. Be good. Rogers. 
I figured he'd be coming into town. Sure was a tough break losing all those cattle. Hi, Roy. Hi, Cookie. Any clues yet? Only what's here in the paper. The fireman of the cattle train, when questioned, said that it was a dark night and he was busy watching the track ahead. When he turned and yelled something at Casey, he noticed that the engineer appeared to be sleeping. Being surprised at this, he crossed over to shake him and discovered that he was dead. Poor guy didn't have a chance. Roy, the fireman never stopped the train till he got to the junction. That's when he discovered the cattle were missing and called me. Now, the mystery is the train never stopped once. The doors were closed and locked and still the cattle were gone. Now, that beats me. Well, it put us back about five years. Yeah, I hear you boys been working hard. Cookie, is there anything I can do for Casey's family? No, they're all right. The only thing we can do to help is to catch the rat that did this. I know that. Top shelf, first one on the right. I knew you'd feel this way. That's why I had it all polished and waiting for you. Roy, I'm going to have to swear you in again. Put your left hand on the Bible, raise your right. Do you? I do. Good. Now that you're on the payroll, you got any ideas? Yes. Do you have any old clothes at home? Well, the ones I do my housework in. Well, go get them. We're going to do some plain clothes work. <laughs> Swell, I ain't done anything like this since I took the desk job. I'll meet you back here in a half an hour. I'll be a minute. Plain clothes. I still think we ought to brought our horses. We ain't pick up a clue, and all we've done is walk, walk, walk. <laughs> yeah, and you aren't built for walking. I think we can get back quicker by not following the railroad tracks. Let's get over on the highway. We might catch a ride. Well, it suits me. My feet are killing me. Relief from my corns. What if they'll give us a ride? Let's see. Pick up the tools and put them in there, huh? Oh, I'm aching back. Get in. We're flat. Hey, get a load of that. Could be bandits. They have them out here, you know. I read all about them. Well, bandits or no bandits, let's get out of here. <laughs> was awfully cute. Yeah, but if we had a blind date, I know which one I would get. This is the life. <laughs> it sure is. Gee, that's pretty. Yeah. Say, did you leave the radio on? I certainly did not. 
Joan. It's them. They're in there. Who? Those two bandits. They're back there in the trailer. Drive back. <laughs> Side, Bob. Now you folks take cover. There might be gunplay. Oh, I hope they don't have to shoot the cute one. All right. Come on out with your hands up. <laughs> Sergeant Bullfincher. <laughs> Carry on. Did those girls? They certainly did. <laughs> What happened to him? The same thing that happened to me. Is this thing still in one piece? Then they're not criminals? No, they're not criminals. They just happen to be two of the best law officers the state ever had. Oh, dear. Now, if you want to go in there and square yourself with them, I'd do it right away. All right. As you say, officer. Just a minute. You know, you almost got me into trouble. You look Western enough to take care of yourself. I do. They did come in here, didn't they? Well, they must be in there. Let's get this thing over with. No, they <laughs> let's leave, ma'am. Oh, no, wait a minute. We didn't do it on purpose. We sure didn't. And we're awful sorry about it, too. I'm Joan Andrews, and this is Tony Borden. You see, Mr. Rogers, we've been seeing a lot of movies lately, so naturally we thought you were bandits. Get the keys, Cookie. Movies, eh? Well, in that case, I guess we'll have to forgive you. But as far as Sergeant Bullfinch is concerned, it was much better than walking at that. That's what you think. <laughs> Thank you. What are you doing out here? We came out to collect a trust fund. Years ago, my father, Jim Andrews, was killed in a mine accident not far from here and left it for me. Who handles the fund? Oh, a lawyer named uh, Jason Holly. We're using part of it to build a place in the country. Yeah, we sure tired of living in a trailer. <laughs> I know, Holly. He has an office across the street and down about a block. Well, as soon as I get cleaned up, I'll go over and see him. No hard feelings? No hard feelings. <laughs> if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. As a matter of fact, there is. Would you mind looking up the record of my father's death? I'd like to know where he was buried. Of course, I'll be glad to. I'd appreciate it. I'd like to see that his grave was being cared for. I'll let you know as soon as I hear. Good. Thanks. Hey! Isn't he pretty, Joan? A blonde horse. He certainly is. Is he yours? Mm-hmm. This is Trigger. Trigger, say hello to the girl. <laughs> <laughs> use on his hair. Not a thing, ma'am. He was born that way. I wonder how I'd look in this color. 
Look, Joan, bang. Well, that's that. Now you take this, pay off the man. I'll take the rest over to the bank and straighten out the Andrews girl account. Not a bad little haul for one night's work. Should happen more often. Now, listen, Farrell, we've gotten out of one mess. I don't want to... Hey, Holly. That looks like Andrews girl now. Get out of sight. Now, while I talk to him. And try and keep quiet. Mr. Holly? That's right. And I'll bet you're Joan Andrews. Yes. I got your letter, and I'm glad you arrived safely. I didn't know exactly what day to expect you, so I haven't all the papers ready yet. Oh? Uh, you know, transferring an amount of money like that takes quite a little paperwork. It does? Well, I thought all Now, I had... don't you worry. I'll take care of everything. You must be pretty tired. As a matter of fact, we are. We? Yes, my girlfriend and I. We had quite a ride today. I think I can stand a day's rest. Of course, it'll do you good. Meanwhile, I'll straighten out everything at the bank, and we'll talk business later. Now I'll call the hotel and get rooms for you. Oh, it won't be necessary. We're living in a trailer we brought with us. Oh, in that case, I'll get someone to help you. Thank you. Mort! Yeah? Mort, this is Miss Andrews. I want you to show her where to park a trailer. Mort will do anything he can to help you. But I will. Oh, well, uh... Thank you, Mr. Holly. I don't think it would be necessary. We'll take care of everything, really. Thank you, too. Bye. We didn't get our hands on that money any too soon. Oh, Farrell. Hey, put that back. Sit down and listen to me. Are you trying to double-cross me? I'm not trying to double-cross anybody. I'm trying to protect you. I'm going to put this money where you can't get your hands on it and give it to that girl. And we'll both go to the penitentiary. Not if they can't find us. There's a lot of money in that box, and in a couple of weeks there's going to be a lot more. Why should we share it with a girl that's big enough to make her own living? Yeah, she's also big enough to cause us a lot of trouble. You're an attorney? Try stalling her. That's your problem. Now listen, Farrell. I am an attorney. Now don't be dumb. That's a smart girl. I've been at this game a long time. Play it my way. I'll keep the money, I promise you. You know, I think you're right, Holly. But I don't want to lose your friendship. You and I got to stick together. Put that money in the safe and don't worry about the girl getting it. Oh, I'm sorry you were jilted. But you can come with me, precious. Turn in early. I guess this can wait till morning. 
I'll leave it. times do I have to tell you? I was walking by the trailer camp. I saw somebody monkeying with the cooking gas. Naturally, I thought you were a prowler, so I slugged you. What were you doing around there? I'm not going to say a word till my attorney gets here. Good evening, gentlemen. I see you have my partner under arrest. Right. He's also my client, you know. I'd like to arrange bail immediately. Sorry, Howley, but there'll be no bail. He's in for attempted murder. Lock him up, Cookie. Now, just a minute, Sheriff. Uh, you're asking for a lot of trouble. We're used to it. Well, uh, you, you, you're going to get it. Farrell, uh, don't say anything. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in the morning. This part of the office is private. Well, things have come to a pretty pass when you bullies can throw a law-abiding citizen into jail without any evidence. How do you know there isn't any evidence? Why, I... Uh, oh, well, there couldn't be any evidence. 
I know my partner is an honest, decent man, and he wouldn't do such a thing. I warned your friend, and I'm warning you, you're making a big mistake. Just wait till court opens in the morning. I'll get a writ. You can't do anything like this to me. Hey, he was a little upset, wasn't he? Say, I did what you asked me to this afternoon. I checked with Kramer down at the bank, and there's been no large deposits made this week. That's too bad. Another leak gone. I did find out that Howley got an express money order for $20,000 this afternoon, though. $20,000 for Howley? Yeah. That's a lot of money in one chunk for him. Where'd it come from? Reno, I know just what you're thinking. I thought so, too. But them cattle were worth $40,000 if they're worth a penny. Not if they're stolen. Howley seemed awful anxious to get Farrell out of here. Let's take a run over to the trailer camp and see how the girls are. Roy, Howie's coming. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I'm sorry I was so upset last night. Uh, may I come in? Why not? I should have told you this before. Told us what? It's about my client, Mr. Farrell, and I'd rather say it in front of him, if you don't mind. After all, I know the law, Mr. Rogers. That's right, Roy. I'll let him out. Clancy, let Farrell out! Sit down. You see, Rogers, when I said last night that I was sure Farrell couldn't have been guilty of an attempted murder on Joan. I was pretty sure of what I was saying. Then why didn't you explain him? Uh, you'll understand in a moment. I don't know who tried to kill Joan Andrews, but I'm sure it wasn't this man. Because this man is actually Jim Andrews, Joan's father. How about that, Farrell? As your attorney, I advise you to tell him. Yeah, he's right. When I was younger, I got in a jam and they put me in the penitentiary. When I got out, I came west. My wife never forgave me. She made me promise that Joan, our daughter, would never know. Then why did you change your name to Farrell? Because of the promise. I didn't want Joan to know that her father, Jim Andrews, was still alive. Have you any proof of this? Yes. I have his billfold right here. Here's a picture of Joan as a baby. There's all his old identification papers. I took the liberty of taking him out of your room. That's the reason I was down at the trailer last night. This country's pretty rugged, and I wanted to be near my daughter and watch out for her. What are you going to do about it? If it's all the same to you, I'd just soon Joan go on thinking I was dead. And uh, we'll have a trust fund ready as soon as the papers are all straightened out. Good. Farrell looks like I've made a mistake. I'm sorry. It's all right, Rogers. Anybody could make a mistake. After all, how could you know? As far as attempted murder's concerned, we'll just forget the whole thing. Uh, thank you, Rogers. I knew you'd be reasonable. Have a good smoke, Sheriff. Roy, you didn't believe that stuff, did you? Why not? They had plenty of proof. Those identification papers were the real thing. Yeah, but where did he get them? Cookie, you remember Joan's father had a partner named Farrell. You don't think he got Andrew's identification papers? Back? That's just what I think. I also think they've been juggling the books a little with Joan's money and they're trying to cover up. Here, have a good smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Well, you're right on time. How do you feel? Wonderful. What happened last night seems like a bad dream. Say, Joan, before you came to this town, did the name Farrell mean anything to you? No. That's what I thought. Come on, we're going to go prospecting. I'll explain to you on the way out. Right. <laughs> Hey, 
this is it. If the dope I got at the claiming office is correct, this was the Lucky Jim. I wonder what kind of a mine it was. Well, it doesn't look like much of any kind. Well, it must have been something. Damn it, it's... Hey! been there for a long time. They might cave in on you. I understand. This is probably the reason his death was never reported. He was murdered. Murdered? Yes, and I'm pretty sure Farrell as his partner had something to do with it. And he also had something to do with our cattle. What are we going to do about this? I'm going to arrest him as soon as I get enough evidence. I'll need your help. Of course. Out of jail just in time, Holly. The pioneers are going to load some more cattle. Yeah. Interesting. Oh. Shut up, Farrell. I got to take Shut up something. and listen. They're loading tonight. I'll get a hold of the boys. It'll be the same setup. Oh, fine. That, with the other money, will give us plenty. Because I don't know how much longer I can keep us out of jail. Listen, Holly. What do you want? I want to tell you about Rogers and that dame. They've been out in the country riding. What's so unusual about that? Nothing except they stopped off by those old diggings near Twin Peaks and Twin Peaks. Around. That's the old mine. What else you see? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Howley. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, hello, Joan. Did you enjoy your ride? Well, yes. Uh, thank you. Mr. Howley, I must see you again about the trust fund. You see, I've got to have it right away. We're leaving tomorrow, and I need the money very badly. Well, you see, Joan, as I explained... Did Mr. Rogers send you? Why, no. And then why the sudden departure? You weren't in any hurry last night. You told me there was plenty of time. I did? Well, I guess if I did, on second thought... On second thought, take her in the other room and tie her to that chair. Please don't open your mouth like a little girl and yell. Because if you do... Don't worry. Let's go. Why is do that? We're already involved in one like that. Be quiet. I'm sure that girl's working for Rogers. If she is, that cattle shipment's a plan. We don't want to take any chances. I want her to overhear a little act that you and I are going to do. It'll be dark in about a half an hour, I'll tell you. I know I'm later than I should be, Cookie, but a lot of things have happened. I've been with a freight agent and had him delay the train so it won't hit Paiute Grade before daylight. Where's Joan? I don't know. Why? She was supposed to meet me here. Hello, operator. Give me Jason Howley's office, please. Cookie, round up the pioneers and be at the grade before daylight. I'm riding with the cattle. No answer. She's probably going back to the trailer camp. You check it for me, will you, Cookie? Right away. I've got to get on that train. I'll see you the first thing in the morning and keep your fingers crossed. Good luck. Hello, Nellie. See if you can find me the pioneers up at the Double R Ranch. Well, you're still here. It's, uh, it's getting dark out. Put the light on? Huh? <laughs> I'm just checking. Uh, I loosened the rope. She can get away in time.
time she wants. What's the idea of coming here, Rogers? We don't like state coppers. Put your hands up. Get his guns, Mort. Hey, you're not so brave without those guns, are you? Roy! Be careful! You were right about Bell! Stay where you are, Rogers. Stay where you are. You asked for it. Well, that finishes Rogers. Mort? Get the boys and meet the train at Devil's Pass. But, but you said play you great. I've changed my mind. We'll fool them. We'll meet them at Devil's Pass instead. Sure. And Miss Andrews will be our little carrier pigeon. We'll take the cattle at Paiute Grade as usual. Nobody knows this combination but Holly, and he ain't gonna tell. Bad we didn't get here to help him. Well, he may not be dead. I wonder where they took him. They probably took him along. There's no use trying to carry out Roy's plans at Paiute Grade. Are you sure you heard right? Absolutely. They said Devil's Pass. You get a hold of Tony and stay all night at headquarters in case we get some word about Rogers. No. Tony can stay at headquarters. I'm riding trigger and going along with you. You know how I feel about Farrell, and I want to be there when he gets what's coming to him. Good girl. Come on, fellas. Our train don't come through until morning, but let's get a head start. and on that train. Yeah. You see anything? Sure funny, though. There she is and nothing's happened. Come on. Well, that beats me. Now, see, are you sure they said Devil's Pass? I'm positive. What do you suppose happened? When the train didn't come through last night, they probably lost their nerve. What are we going to do? We're going back to headquarters. Now, if they haven't picked up Howley and Farrell, I'm going to start the biggest manhunt this state has ever known. Pass. 
Why you grave neck? I don't like to operate this way in daylight. No. Maybe this time we'll have to stop it. Won't make any difference. This is our last job. It makes me laugh when I think of the law sitting down at Devil's Pass waiting for us. We gotta get those cattle out of here. coming from the Piute grade. You guys are crazy. You're hearing things. Oh, shut up, Pat. Listen, there it goes again. So what? It's a train whistle. We can't stick around here. We got things to do in town. Come on, fellers. But Casey used to blow that whistle when it meant something, and I'm going to see if it means something now. 
Come on back, fellas. We might as well follow him. He'll get himself in trouble. Get around the other side of the train. I'll cover you. in Howley's office. Wasn't my blood.
He won't bother you anymore. And Holly? I don't know yet. I checked with the bank, though, and there's enough money there to cover everything. Thanks. cattle, and they're really in good hands now. Here, you might want to keep this. Oh, no, Roy. I, I, I don't want this. It hasn't been lucky for anybody. Well, I'll take it. Oh, no, Roy, you don't. Just stand back. 